Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Get Geek Podcast, where we celebrate geek, nerd, and pop culture. Each week, we deliver the best analysis for fans, by fans, on anything related to movies, TV, video games, comics, anime, and manga. We talk geek. And now, here's the Get Geek Podcast. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of the Get Geek Podcast. We hope you've had a great week. Hope you've enjoyed our most recent podcast, because why wouldn't you enjoy our most recent and awesome podcast? Last week, we did our movie blowout. We talked about Mulan, the live-action version, Bill and Ted Face the Music, and the New Mutants. And the week before, we did our episode tributing, or paying tribute, I should say, to the incomparable Chadwick Boseman. Check it out. Get Geek Podcast. As usual, a couple of points to make before we get started. The best way to support our podcast is to like, rate, share, and subscribe to our podcast. It's the best thing to do. You can find our podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, where all of your favorite podcasts are sold. As well, as usual, we will be recording remotely this week. We've been doing that for the last couple of months out of safety. So if there's any sound issues or artifacts, please let us know and we will do our best to correct any issues. We've been doing the best we can to do that over the last couple of weeks. This week, Walt and Wolfie are going to be taking the week off. You guys probably know me already. I'm Jose. This is AJ. Eli. Yeah, yeah. And this week, after our big movie blowout episode of last week, we all just jumped into... I guess catching up on some old stuff, watching some things that we've been interested in. We're just going to do a geek out episode this week and let you guys all know what we've been watching over the last week or so. Um, I know I've been binging and watching a lot of stuff. Eli, what about you, man? What have you been binging on in the last week? What What's new and awesome? So um, recently, Fortnite dropped the season four battle pass uh-huh. for chapter two. And okay, first first disclaimer: mm-hmm. I do not like Fortnite. Mm-hmm. I don't like it at all. Really? But the <laughs> battle pass looks fire. Not even gonna lie. So um, I'm just gonna run through the battle pass from what I remember. I'm pretty sure Thor is tier one, so you get him straight off the bat. Okay. He, he can um he has this emote which looks really cool that allows him to like go into like lightning mode. I know it sounds corny, but like it's like what happened is his blue blue his skin turns blue. Got a thunder. Yeah, got a thunder mode, and um, yeah, um, I think you actually after after that you have She Hulk, and She Hulk is pretty cool. But the thing that's really cool is that I'm pretty sure she has the red Hulk form. I don't know. She Hulk has a red Hulk form. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Or it's it's a it's a rumor. I'm pretty sure. She but they, huh. yeah, she does. Interesting. But um, after that, then we have like we. I'm just gonna run through all the characters. Actually, we have Wolverine. He has a skin for House of X. It looks like Doctor Doom, Mystique, Groot, Rocket Raccoon, Groot and Rocket Raccoon, mm-hmm. Storm, and as the tier 100 skin, you have Iron Man. Who starts out start starts off as Tony Stark and then he can like gear up basically. So hmm. um, the thing that I really like, other than the fact that it's Marvel, is it's a little bit different How so? from what they usually do. Because um, the whole theme of this is called the Nexus War, and what happens is Galactus is like heading straight for like. I guess the Fortnite world and like they're gathering all the Avengers to stop him. So it's, it's like really, I don't even know what to say about this. It's mind blowing. It's not something. So it's like that's some, Fortnite. Some weird Marvel multiverse storyline that just got tossed into Fortnite basically. Yeah. So it, I, I find the characters really cool, and you also have like backblings. For instance, you have the baby Groot in like a teacup dancing, and then you also have um, 
the Sentinel head, which has the Wolverine claw. Okay. So I find those pretty cool. Um, Silver Surfer, I think, already came out, or he's coming out. Mm. So that'd be really cool to see. Um, and that's basically it for the Fortnite Battle Pass. Um, I'm also I also want to make a br- brief mention to a show that I've been watching, mm. Hunter x Hunter, and. Mm, I don't I don't know what to say about it. It's kind of like Naruto. Just well, how so? It has the same theme. It has the same theme, and the way they do it is a little bit of the same like Naruto. Well, how, how so, so? can can you tell me what theme you're thinking of um, that is the same as Naruto in Hunter X Hunter? Well, you know, what? not a theme. I think it's like okay. Naruto goes to join to like become a top rank. Ninja, and then in mm-hmm. Hunter x Hunter, uh, Gon is trying to become a top rank uh, hunter. So it's kind of like I feel like it's they're basically the same anime, just different in like. Well, there are a few things that are different. Like if I remember correctly, his father was like a world renowned monster hunter, and then he like either disappeared or died. Yeah, but I guess it's similar to Naruto in a way because. His father was also a pretty big deal as a ninja, if I remember correctly. But then he died, but, you know, it was facing the nine-tailed fox, or right? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm iffy about this. I still need to watch more because I'm up to, like, episode four. Mm. But so far, the, the thing that I like really most about it is Killua and Gon's friendship. It's like... <laughs> It's, Who's Kalua again? Kalua is the is the kid with the white hair. Um, he, the first time we see him, he's, well, the second time, he's one of, yeah, you'll see, you'll see. So, so right now, AJ is searching him up, but he's. I guess I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> Kalua sold, sold, yuck. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce yeah. that. We'll but, just call him Killua. You yeah. know who we're talking about. Killua and Gon. They have like a really, really in uh, friendship that's like mm. what, like a Goku and Vegeta thing. Yeah, like a Goku and Ve- well, they're not frenemies. really. They're they're not frenemies, but like it's like two little. You know how when you go to the park and there's like this little kid that you just meet randomly. Yeah, I mean, I can't do that anymore because I'm 40 years old. But okay. yeah, yeah, no, I don't, I don't do that either. But like, it's kind of like that relationship. Hey kids, so, I'm just gonna yeah. go down the slide. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna be a little weird over here. But uh, okay, yeah. But anyway, that's that's my geek out. Um, AJ, you? All right, all right. So I um I'm gonna start off with my mention. I, I was watching CBS's Evil for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I did what? I got up to episodes one through three. And you know what? I was actually pretty interested. So what Evil is, is it's a show about um, this lawyer. Or she's like a lawyer. She's a forensic psychologist. And she's working on this case. And the guy... Who she's, uh, I guess, uh, working against, mm-hmm. uh, like, you know, the other side. He, he's, you know, I think he's, like, playing insanity or something like that. And all of a sudden, he kind of, oh, I'm, I'm, he ha- he started exhibiting, he starts exhibiting behavior, uh, possession, uh, behaviors. Um, mm-hmm. and so what happens is, this other guy, his name is David Acosta. He's basically sent by the church to determine whether this is a supernaturally thing or it's a fake. And so that's basically the whole show. Grappling with, is supernatural evil out there? Mm-hmm. Or is it just people, you know? And I found that it was very interesting because there were points where I was like, oh, crap, well, how did he know that? It has to be real, but it actually turns out to be this other guy who's a, a complete psychopath. He was in, he was in Lost. Well, I, for, I forget what his uh, Whoa. Ben, 
Ben, ben is in this oh, show. Oh, Ben, yeah. Yeah. He's good for that type of shows. Yeah, and he he guys. he actually he's he's very interesting. What he likes to do is he likes to the people that uh the forensic psychologist, her name is Kristen Bouchard. Um what he likes to do with the people she's opposing is he likes to give them the idea like, yeah, you're evil. Yeah, you're you're possessed by a supernatural being, you know. He gets them to act their part, quote unquote. He mm-hmm. he's basically like an influencer, a bad a really bad influence. And it's just really interesting. <laughs> But the problem I ran into mm-hmm. was that because I watched I, I watched Evil through YouTube TV. What ended up happening was that I saw episodes one, two, and three, and then when I went to read, to watch the next episode, it was episode six. What? So it's like, where's episode four and five? What did happen? <laughs> How did that happen? I don't understand. I, I heard sometimes that- yeah. YouTube TV has this problem where. It'll do the recording, but it'll skip certain episodes. Oh, that's terrible. And it was just, yeah, it's I thought really that was, bad. I thought that might have been something like, I think there was an issue with some Disney Plus shows where the episodes were, like, out of order. But, no, this is kind of even worse because you're, like, trying to record it. And it's just like, nope, I changed my mind. You don't deserve episode four and five. Watch, <laughs> read the synopsis <laughs> online. Like, well, I don't. I, that that for me, that kind of defeats the purpose. Because like, yeah, the watching a show, you know, you want to absorb everything, yeah. like take it in. Like the synopsis, in my opinion, wouldn't do it justice if, so, if I'm trying to no immerse myself in the world. You know? Yeah. So is this? Are there are there episodes available to stream anywhere else? Are you going to have to wait for that thing to come that's, around? That's what I was looking for. But CBS, you obviously have to have a CBS account. Um, I, I found have it on CBS All Access, Amazon. Actually, if huh? you'd like to, if you'd like to see, I have CBS All Access. Actually, I have oh, had do? it. Yes, if you want to use that to figure out and uh, how you want to watch Evil, I'll give you the credentials and you can check that out. Because I was using it to watch the. The Star Trek show, Picard. Oh, that's right. Um, so, yeah, if you want to watch Evil, we want we want to be able to continue your geekiness about this. So let me know, and I'll give that to you offline when we get off of this week's episode. Evil, oh, okay, sure. Evil episodes four and five. <laughs> all right. Literally all the rest of them are there. But <laughs> yeah, why would we want to ruin a perfectly geeky moment by not having those episodes? That's just wrong, man. So... Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Now, guys. the other thing, this is the thing I've been geeking out like hardcore. Mm-hmm. It came out a year ago, but it finally became like uh, Dad got the, uh, the actual movie. I think it, no. No, so it took place in 2019, if I remember correctly. Okay. A concert, but I, I guess we ended up getting it, you know, now. Uh, I don't know. Either way, we got it. I have the the other day. I was watching Metallica's San Francisco Symphony Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Yes, so, and my God, I was blown away. I forget that they released another <laughs> one of those. The first one is an epic masterpiece. Yeah. Right. Okay. And this one. It, it's pretty good too. Um, it has. It certainly has its nostalgic moments. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you hear the ecstasy of gold come on, and you're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I am ready." Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna run down the roster of songs that they actually went and played. So obviously, you have the opening "Ecstasy of Gold." Yep. And just like last time, it uh, "Ecstasy of Gold" was followed up by the "Call of Cthulhu." Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, um, it was pretty similar. Um, the only thing that's different is um, the composer, the, the the person who does the composing. It wasn't um, the original guy who did the composing was Michael Kamen, but he actually uh, passed away a few years back. Mm-hmm. So there are there were differences. You know, it was more or less the same. But you know, mm-hmm. with a new composer, there's you know. Change this a little bit here, and I'll give it my own little spice of life. Right, right, and a different bass 
bass player than than they had back then. Jason Newstead being the bass player for SNM one, and now Robert Trujillo being the bass player for this one. Yeah, he's awesome uh, too. I see him live. Yeah, I miss uh, I miss Jason. But Robert Trujillo, he he's he's really good too. He's interesting. Definitely. I'll say because I've seen him live, and this this is not to to like say anything bad about Metallica, but they're all old. And he's young. So if you go to a live show, like all the other guys are kind of like standing around and he's like flying all over the stage, jumping, <laughs> doing crazy solos. So it's kind of fun to see his energy in the band in comparison to the rest of the guys. And don't, tell, don't get me wrong. They still rock for their age. But these yeah, guys they like still got it. Years. Like I, I was watching the, I, the first thing I did was I listened to it, but then I watched the actual, you know the movie mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they still got it <laughs> yeah no they definitely put on an awesome live show still regardless they're still one of the best ever i haven't seen them in years but i would love to go see them again all right mm-hmm. yeah and after that you had for whom the bells tolls yes. that was a pretty good one too Ooh. and then this is for this next one is from one of their newer albums uh death magnetic oh, really? uh is the day that never comes now, for this one, they did something a little different. Okay. What they did was um, – oh, no. Was that the other one? No, I think the day that never comes uh, – what they did was it was just the orchestra and uh, James was doing the singing. But you didn't have Lars on the drums. You, they changed it up a little. It was, it was pretty interesting. Like the part where they had the – there's a part where you know you have the awesome riff. It, it was substituted with like trumpets and and, uh, and uh, I think that was a saxophone. Maybe I like that. I like that. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. You know, me and Walt both both played trumpet back in our day, so that's something that we would both really appreciate. Wow. Okay. Then you had the memory remains. Ooh. Yeah. Damn. And then they had from one of their newer albums, uh, not Death Magnetic. Just give me a second. I know this one. <sighs> More Death recent Magnetic. than Death Magnetic. Um, what is oh, it? God. I, I'm horrible. I have to actually look this up. I'm evil. Am yeah, I'm trying evil? to remember what's come out since Death Magnetic as well. Because yes, they've had a couple of albums. They had an album, I think, with... Uh, was it Tom Waits? They did an album with some other rock star, I remember, but I don't remember all of the live albums that they come out with recently. Let's see. Death it Magnetic. was one of the last ones. I hardwired to self destruct. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was the one, and that one sounded amazing. Uh huh. Like with with the or- I, you guys can't like you have to listen to it. The orchestra and the band go together so well. Yeah. And especially with the newer songs. Is, there were times when I, were lis- when I was listening to these tracks and I almost cried. And I can't say that for a lot of things. But for this, I can legitimately say I was almost brought to tears. That reminds <laughs> me because when you say that it goes so well with the, with the, the orchestra – how Metallica goes really well with that. I remember I used to have conversations like that myself, like 20 years ago with friends of mine. I remember I had a conversation with a friend I went to college with this guy, Charles, and we would always like geek out about Metallica because to us, the way that they arranged their songs without S and M, the orchestra, the band always felt like, like a, like a classical composition because of the way that the notes kind of all fit together, the wall of sound that they create with the guitars on their albums. Like there's just something that's always been like that kind of cool melodic feeling, which is why I fell in love with Metallica. Like, and you did as well. I did like more yeah. than 20 years ago. You did probably almost the same at this point. Cause you've been a fan since you were younger than I was. I wasn't a fan of Metallica yeah. until I was 17 or 18. So that kind of always reminds me of that. Yeah. And I'm, would really, 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 really be interested in seeing this concert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, other ones they did were Moth into Flame. That's also from Hardwired to Self Destruct. Uh, they did Outlaw Torn. That one holds a very special place in my heart because that just sounds so amazing. Heck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they did No Leaf Clover again uh, from the original SM. So good. Yeah, 
And they also did, uh, this is from, also from uh, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. They did Halo on Fire. That one sounds so, oh my God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was one of the the tracks that had me almost crying. Like, it was so beautiful. I remember Pearl Jam's live albums used to bring me to tears as well. Not to take away from Metallica, Metallica, but I know how you feel, man. There's emotion behind those awesome guitar solos and all of that. Gives you goosebumps, yeah. makes the hairs on your on your arm stand up and all that. So yeah, not even that. Like some of the lyrics too, they just hit home, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And then they did something. Uh, this time, they had the they gave the orchestra like a moment to shine. So they did uh, something all on their own. It was called the Scythian Suite. That sounded pretty good too. Scythian, like Sith Lord. No, like the Scythians, as in the ancient, the ancient people. Oh, like a like okay, like like uh, Andromache, the Scythian, that one. Yeah, yeah like okay. that. It's like wait, Sith, Metallica, and Sith. Like, how much better is this gonna yeah. get? <laughs> Imagine no. they did like a Star Wars soundtrack. <laughs> oh my God! Mandalorian season two, where, wherever I may roam. Is the opening theme to season two? So great! <laughs> they could use some of the stuff from the S and M album one or two to give it like a really awesome John Williams classical feel, and yet yes. have the music shredding so hard that Mandalorian helmets will explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What other um, songs did they do? They did a new one called "The Iron Foundry," and this is one that. I think I, if I remember correctly, it started out with the orchestra, but then towards like the middle or the end, the band came in also. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was another one of the orchestra centric ones. And again, sounded pretty good. Really good. Solid. Um, from Death Magnetic, they did the Unforgiven Three. That oh, was a really good addition man. to this uh, to this lineup. I love oh, that. Oh, that's version. the one that I love. Okay. Mm-hmm. They did. I was surprised that they did one from St. Anger. They did all within my hands. St. Anger, yeah. <laughs> Even though it's a fun album, it doesn't get a lot of props because of the sound yeah. being so good. It has some pretty good tracks, too. Like, a couple that I like from that one are Sweet Amber. You also have this one, All Within My Hands. You have uh, Some Kind of Monster. Uh, I like the the... They came out with a... A single for that one. Uh, it's still part of Saint Anger, but I find the single version that's kind of cut down a little bit better. That's just my personal opinion, though. Saint Anger. But either way, it's still from Saint Anger. Really good tracks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which one did? And you- then they had a tribute to Cliff Burton, uh, one of the guys from the orchestra. I don't know what the instrument is called, but it, it, it looked like a really swanky bass. He did anesthesia, pulling teeth. Oh, interesting. That was really good. As a tribute to the original bassist of yeah. Metallica, Cliff Burton. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And that's a good track, too. And then, of course, you have the title favorites towards the end. You have Wherever I May Roam. You have one, Master of Puffets. Right. Puppets. Oh, Sorry there. Master of Puffins. <laughs> <laughs> no. Master, Master of Puffins is pulling your strings. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing else matters. That also another one I hold very close to heart. Heck yeah! And then they wrapped it all up with "Enter the Sandman." Ah, uh, okay. That's <laughs> not my favorite on the S and M albums, but it's still freaking dope. I like um, wherever my I may yeah. roam and one and all of those a heck of a lot better. But yeah, it's I mean it's still Metallica, so I can't complain. Yeah. So just all in all, it was such an amazing experience to have. God, I wish I'd have gone to that live. Like, right. damn. <laughs> I remember so reading about it last year and like reading about it like a month before it was supposed to happen. I was like, no. Why did nobody <laughs> tell us this? Like, in advance? Like if we gotta, we got to join the Metallica fan club, I guess, so we can get the inside scoop on this stuff. But we'll never know when they're going to do SNM three. Yeah, but uh, that—that's what I've been geeking out on. It's just amazingness in the music realm. Super. Never forget. Mm-hmm. One year ago, 2019. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that feels like about 
10 years ago at this point, the way things have <laughs> yeah, been does. over the last month. Do you guys even remember March? I didn't even remember it was a month until like I woke up yesterday and I was like, oh yeah, it's still 2020. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Dude, yeah. come on, Eli, it's been such a long year. Do you don't feel it too, buddy? Like yeah. I feel like so yeah. weird because of how things have been. So like stuff that happened in 2019 to me feels like it happened like when I was like your guy's age at this point. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It just yeah. feels so far off, man. The 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 regular original world. This is the world we live in now. But anyway, I'm not gonna get all depressing. I promise you. Yeah. Let, me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me jump into my geek house because hey, 2020 still has some good stuff coming out. And there's some stuff that I was catching up on as well. Um I'll start with one of my uh new favorite little horror movie parodies that I finally saw this is a pr- fairly old movie i think it came out in 2012 if i'm not mistaken it is a, a little joss whedon film called the cabin in the woods now i will say spoilers 2011 sort of 2011 yeah so okay exactly right around the time where a year before avengers came out this is one of the movies that kind of popularized mr mr chris hemsworth uh, even though I do find it kind of distracting throughout the movie, him trying to pull off an American accent because it definitely slips a bunch of times. But he's a good actor. He's a fun actor. He's entertaining and he's funny. Um, and this movie, The Cabin in the Woods, was actually – I mean I've heard so much about it. You guys have seen it. Walt has suggested it in the past. I think he actually talked about it on a geek out if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I finally yeah. checked it out. Yeah, right? it, it, I do feel like he did talk about it at some point before. But – I finally got to check it out. I had, um, yeah, exactly. I had a million people, not just Walt, not just you guys, but like I had a million people, like some friends of mine telling me like, hey, you got to check out Cabin in the Woods if you like, you know, like horror movies and Chris Hemsworth and Joss Whedon and a little bit of comedy and satire. It's, this movie is all those things kind of rolled into one, which is what made it so entertaining for me. And I love some of the cast. Like I'm a fan of Richard Jenkins and um, my boy Bradley, Bradley Whitford, who was in the Get Out films. Uh, obviously, Chris Hemsworth is awesome. Some of the supporting cast is pretty great, including Jesse Williams and others. Sigourney Weaver just showing up in this movie as well, kind of being the big bad is what she does in movies these days. She's always like the big bad guy. But like, I like this movie a lot because it's just a great satire, something we talked about and something that we mentioned before we got on here. It's, it's really good at how it kind of makes fun of horror movie tropes. I think that's what I love about it the most because you have all your different characters. You kind of have like the promiscuous girl. You have the the really innocent girl. You have the the, the, the dopey dude. You have the jock. You have the freaking the you know the the smart guy, which is interesting because Chris Hemsworth plays like the smart dude in this one. But <laughs> it's like, I like how they kind of twisted that and they gave him like the you know without ruining the movie too much. I guess this will ruin the movie, but I will say that like there's people interfering in this because it's a horror slasher slasher movie where they you know zombies come and try to kill chris hemsworth and jesse williams and the whole crew oh yeah um well what's awesome is there's actually some interference from this like this group that we don't entirely understand what their reasoning is at the beginning of the movie by the end we understand what it is they're trying to accomplish but i like the detail where they were like pumping the room full of like these chemicals that was making chris hemsworth chris hemsworth like like nerd character actually act like the jock character so they were kind of like putting them all together in this weird way but like the movie is just, the movie is kind of funny and i do definitely love the fact that one thing that they they kind of take pride in this movie is they bust out so many horror movie monsters or like horror <laughs> monsters that are like well i'll put it this way there's a there's a monster and you guys remember that's kind of like the guy from hellraiser but it's not, oh. like, it's not Pinhead. Remember, it's a, he's a little different in this one. He has like saws going. I through actually there. don't remember that. Um, Yo, that was one of the first monsters they run into, and of course they have um, they have some movie monsters from like other movies, which is pretty cool. There's actually a Left for Dead um, tie-in. I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but some of the bad guys from the video game Left for Dead are are the monsters in this movie as well. The, I, I read that they were supposed to do a tie-in with the Left for Dead video games, and they never did it. But they like left the 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 like the bloater. I think is the name of one of the characters 
if you watch at the end of the movie when they kind of reveal some of the monsters, you see him there and you see the clown that's kind of like the guy from It. So, like, I think that it's really fun that they kind of pull from all these different horror movies to create this one movie that is basically poking fun at horror movies, but still kind of scary in its own right. I mean, I'm not somebody that gets terrified of horror movies, but it was it was well done. Um you know the kills were fun and, and and funny and interesting and like I said the the you know that that moment with Chris Hemsworth was fun um, and I definitely enjoyed like the dopey kind of like stoner character that guy is a is a funny actor and he plays a good part in this movie <laughs> always messing with people so yeah overall um, I saw that finally and I was really 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 pleasantly surprised so uh, if you get a chance anybody who has not seen that movie. Definitely check it out. I'll just give a couple of honorable mentions that to another couple of movies that I've seen on Netflix recently, including a movie called um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm I'm blanking on the movie that I just saw. Uh, it's called We Summon the Darkness, um, which is actually another mm-hmm. kind of horror movie that turns horror movie conventions on its head. Wasn't that great to begin with, but I will say that it's it's better than I expected by the end of the movie with the way that it kind of Let's say again, I don't want to spoil it, but the movie starts with these three girls and this story about this cult that is kidnapping and killing people. And these girls are going to like a big rock concert, um, you know, just to enjoy the rock concert. And then they get in trouble um, with that group in quotes, we'll say. But then after that, like I said, there's a fun little twist that you probably wouldn't expect. So that's a fun little movie. We Summon the Darkness, I think that came out recently. Uh, starring Alexandra Daddario is the most famous actress that I know from that film, so we'll call on her. Uh, I also saw Ip Man recently, which required hey, me. I've never seen that. You guys got to see it, man. It, it requires really no mention. What? It's Donnie Yen being freaking awesome, and that's really all you need to know. It's one of Donnie Yen's most iconic movies, and for the very quick breakdown, Ip Man is about uh, Bruce Lee's actual um, sensei, his mentor, the man who taught Bruce Lee. Okay, oh, this, yeah. So that's what Ip Man is about. It's kind of um, it's a it's a sensationalized, based on a true story type movie, because the first one takes place around World War II when Japan is invading China. Ip Man being, you know, a very famous Chinese martial artist already at this point. So it kind of deals with like the conflict between Jap- the Japanese soldiers and the Chinese citizens. That's what the first one is about. It's an awesome movie. If you're a martial arts action fan, yo, just just go check it out immediately because it's freaking awesome and it's definitely worth your time. I'm going to get to all the other Ip Man movies hopefully within this next week or so. But my other, let's say, big mention before I get to my grand finale of Geek Outs for this week is an anime that you guys should also definitely catch up on more. So I know you've seen a few episodes. Um, I was introduced to this anime by a friend of mine. We'll give, we'll, we'll, we'll use his nickname, God Seti. Shout out to God Seti if you're listening to this, but he introduces me to a lot of great anime. He's a big anime fan. Um, Yu Yu Hakusho was an anime he introduced me to a little while back, a few months ago that I finished and is also awesome, by the way. Another mention for that. If you haven't seen it, watch it. But uh, that anime that I have been introduced to in just the last couple of weeks is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. (laughs) Which I love for a variety of reasons. The first one I will mention is I was very surprised when I saw the end of the first episode. And this is a, a quick mention for all you classic rock fans who also love anime. The theme song, the ending theme for this movie is actually a very popular, I believe, 70s rock song by a band called Yes. And the name of the song is Roundabout. Okay? And <gasps> you know the song. I feel like I've heard that song. Bro, yeah, of course you have. You probably have. Ooh, you do. No. I'm sure you've heard it because it has that really cool guitar, like kind of like slow acoustic guitar buildup at the beginning. And Bro, then it like hits the bass. Bum, ba-dum, ba-dum, I need to listen to it again. All right, I'm done humming it. But yeah, but what's one of the most legendary songs in meme industry? 
what the most legendary uh, song in the meme oh industry. Oh my god, oh, you have to. Oh. Never gonna give you up, dude. What do you mean? That's, oh well, yeah. Uh, no, no, okay, well, yeah. No, get that out of here. There is no more no. memeable song than "Never Gonna Give You Up," though. <laughs> There's literally uh, an entire troll named after it. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we come come to come to think of it, we actually got Rick rolled recently on the boys. <laughs> Wait, what? what? Yeah, but Explain. that's a whole different. <laughs> Is this worth explaining? Because I was gonna say, like, I, I didn't play this, but I saw. I forgot what game it is. There's a video game that Rick rolls you that I saw in a video the other day. <laughs> what? There's a video game where, man, I can't remember it. If anybody can remember it, definitely send us a message, post it on our Instagram when we when we drop this week's episode. But there was a game. Yeah. I haven't played it, but there's a poster on a wall with a QR code. So, like, you go in this game, and it's really small. It's hard to find. The poster's QR code takes you to the YouTube link for, for uh, <laughs> we're going to give you up by, by, uh, by our boy, by our boy Rick. So, uh, yeah, but that's – that. I guess that would be the most trolly song ever. <laughs> but, no, definitely, definitely check out more of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and you will know that song roundabout by yes when you hear it because it's a very iconic guitar and bass intro um, for that song roundabout. But, I like, that's the first thing that I was kind of like, okay, this anime is interesting. I've been watching it on Netflix. I'm only about 15 episodes in. Um but so far, it's freaking awesome, and I'll tell you why. So one of my favorite animes of the most recent years is this anime um, called Baki the Grappler. They did release Baki on Netflix as well. That's kind of like a third and fourth season, but there's an original anime. I haven't seen the Netflix version of it yet, but the original anime has been was released in Japan many, many years ago, and for some reason... I'm not sure who the production company is for Baki, by the way, but why have you not released it on any streaming services? No Funimation, no Crunchyroll, no Netflix. It is nowhere to be found. So Sounds like an Evangelion thing. I don't understand why. Mm. If you go on eBay, you can buy the, the DVD box set, but it's like $400, and it's like hmm. 40 episodes what? maybe, 45 episodes. So it's not even <laughs> – it's like it's so rare and impossible to find. But I mean, that's that's not the point of this conversation, because the reason I bring that that show up is because in many ways, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure reminds me of one of my favorite aspects of, of Baki. And I don't know if this continued in the Netflix show, but I bet it did. The his opponents all have great backstories. That's something that I love about Baki. Like there's always an interesting reason for their opponents to kind of to do what they want to do, whether it's evil, whether it's just winning a fight. Whatever it is, there's such great backstory to all these characters and such great voice acting. Um, the main villain, at least early on, is a villain named uh, Dio Brando, who actually hey. he becomes a part of the main character's family. So the main character is uh, is Jonathan Joestar, at least it is in the early episode, and he is uh, he's basically a lord or like a, a like sort of like english royalty in the late 1800s his father of course of the joe star family and they take dio brando in but he ends up being kind of jealous and he wants to like take take over the family kind of he wants to like displace jojo or jonathan joe star and so it's cool because any villains you see they have these cool powers they have these great backstories they have this great dialogue um, and it's a funny show too because Jonathan and Joseph Joestar, they both are characters on this and I won't tell you what uh, how they're related to each other because that would ruin it a little bit. But the Joestars are kind of trolls, which is awesome. They just mess with everybody on this show all the time. Um, and I think one of my favorite little funny details besides the characters, besides the awesome music, besides the fact that the main character is just a troll – is that they use this power that for anybody who speaks Spanish, you will probably all chuckle at this a little bit, the jamón power, <laughs> or basically Spanish ham. Um, That's what it means in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, jamón is, for those who don't know, jamón is, is Spanish for ham. And all of the main characters on this show use this power, power called jamón power, which I also find kind of hilarious because I don't know if you guys remember from the episodes that you watched <laughs> But, like, Hamon power is, like, awesome, but has so many limitations. If you're underwater and you can't breathe, you can't really use it. 
Like there's there's like a million reasons why hormone power doesn't work because it's based on like biological energy, but you can cut somebody off from their hormone power and the bad guys are doing this constantly, which makes me wonder why the characters don't learn some other tricks. But either way, <laughs> JoJo's Bizarre Adventure jumping from like medieval medieval 1800s England to you know different time periods it's just a really 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 interesting and different and awesome anime and it reminds me of like castlevania or baki or all these other great anime and like i said the music is great and the animation is very very interesting on the show that's something yeah. that i was really intrigued by and the colors are amazing the way that they shade some of the characters in certain episodes is really really interesting so it's very very aesthetically beautiful without necessarily being the most technically beautiful artwork so like yeah the artwork on the show is really really good too that is definitely something that i've been really really uh geeking out on for the past week or so so jojo's with our adventure if you haven't checked it out people check it the f out it's a good anime definitely a very good awesome anime. awesome yeah yeah so for the big grand finale, and I have to be really careful about spoiling this one because I know that you guys are going to catch up to me very, 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 very soon on this show. Um, recently, yeah. though, we saw the release two weeks ago of season two of Amazon's The Boys, the really, really awesome comic book by very famous showrunner and uh, somebody that we are a fan of on this show, Mr. Eric Kripke. Uh, Eric Kripke. The boy from Supernatural also bringing some of his cast into The Boys Season 3. As some of us are no doubt aware, Soldier Boy is going to be played by none other than AJ, who will be playing him in Season 3. You know this, right? Jensen Ackles will be the Soldier Boy. So we're going to see Soldier a, Boy. Yeah. Soldier Boy is kind of like their character Captain in The Boys. Yeah, he's kind of like a Captain America character in, in The Boys, but he's an idiot. <laughs> So he, yeah, you get to see your boy Jensen play like a really, really dumb, like really, really psychotic version of Captain America by the time season three comes around. I think his origin story is very much the same as Captain America in the comics too, but I'm excited to see that. But that's season three. Right now we're on season three. We're about four episodes in. And so far, I will say the first episode was... Not the best, okay? Again, I don't want to try to spoil this for you guys as much as possible. The first episode kind of played into a lot of the stuff that made season one interesting, but it was a little bit more of the same. Some good setup. Okay. But episodes two, three, and four for me are really, really good, and I'll tell you why, because it does something that they didn't do in the first season, which I understand why, but they're definitely giving you a little bit more backstory, on all of the main characters here. So you get a little bit more about you know, Frenchie and what he's going through and how he's coping, a little bit more backstory from Mother's Milk um, and you know Billy Butcher and his wife. Uh, you find out a little bit more backstory about Homelander, some of the other characters. And oh, yeah. there's definitely some great stuff with The Deep again this season, some really, really funny, funny storylines with him. The Deep. The Deep. <laughs> But something that's great about his storyline this season, too, is they kind of, you know, last season he was kicked out of the seven for being like a jerk towards women, basically, right? And like Wait. using women. If you remember your last season, remember he was a, he was doing bad stuff with women. Uh, and that's when he got kicked out. He got sent to Ohio. I, remember, he remember didn't he get up to that part. I didn't finish season one. Oh, goodness. Gentlemen, all right. I'm going to stop spoiling season one right now. Well, I mean, so I that, saw it. Okay. He didn't. Okay. But so, <laughs> so I remember that. Yeah. You remember that that's kind of why he was um, sent to Sandusky, Ohio in season one. And they touch upon that in an interesting and funny way in this season, which is cool. And I have to give an, uh, a definite mention to the newest cast member, um, Aya Cash, as Stormfront. Uh, that's a gender swap from the comics. Stormfront was was male in the comics. They decided to make her a female character. They've done that with a couple of the characters on The Boys so far, which is fine. And the actress, Aya Cash, that plays Stormfront has actually been really fantastic so far. Again, I don't want to give away too much, but there's a hint of Homelander to her. And that's all oh, I will say. Boy. Okay? You've oh, probably boy. seen from the trailer, she doesn't look like she's all good. You know, like there's definitely some stuff that she does that's 
questionable. suspect and questionable for sure. And when you find out a little bit more of her backstory, it actually relates to some other cool comic book movies and TV shows that I've seen recently, like Watchmen of all things. That's oh. the biggest hint that I'll give you guys. You would have to see Watchmen to understand. But her character is really awesome. Um, and they just, you know, they didn't have my attention, like I said, the first episode and a half or so. But they've been doing so well with kind of fleshing out the characters as these human beings. You know, because they were these great comic characters and like these great action heroes in the first season. And this season they've stepped up the gore too, but they also stepped up the character development, which is nice. You know what I mean? Because because a show like this... It's fun, but like, tell me not. You guys, you and I really wouldn't watch it very long unless the characters stayed consistently interesting. If they got boring, who cares, yeah. right? Yeah. And of yeah, course, I agree. of course, we uh, we have more of our favorite villain from uh, the Mandalorian, Giancarlo Esposito, is on this show as well. He is everywhere, Giancarlo Esposito, who is. Um, oh, so they gave him a little more welly. Yeah, he's he's much more of a big character in the season because, as you recall, what happened to the at the end of last season to, let's say his his uh, employee, <laughs> the young lady that worked for him. Now he's kind of had to step into the role and take yeah. more take more control of the day 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 vault operations. So he, you see him a lot more. You see him clash a little bit with Homelander. You see some of the other characters oh, clash. I'm with interested Homelander. to see how they like. Yeah, you see some of the stuff between Starlight and A Train kind of play out from this from what happened at the end of season one. Um, there's some more great, like like I said, comedy and stuff with uh, with the Deep and his relationship with Fish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Black Noir. Oh my God! I Black- always love like. The I will always love the scene where he's trying to take that dolphin out of Ocean World, yeah. Yeah. and then as he's trying to make his great escape from the police, he just flies out the window. <laughs> let, yeah. let me just say awesome. there is something similar in this where he's trying to do something heroic and something <laughs> something really bad and hilarious happens again because the oh deep is an idiot. <laughs> He's a complete idiot, and he he messes up again, and it's hilarious, and it's in the trailer actually. But I don't wanna I don't wanna say anything other than that. There's a really really hilarious moment. I think it's in episode two or three, involving the deep. There, there's a Hawkeye character in this one now called Eagle Eye. So there's like they're bringing all the Marvel and DC kind of parody guys in. They're making a movie called. Um, Unite the Seven, which is supposed to be a parody of Justice League. It even has the same <laughs> font from from Batman v Superman. Um, is it Unite the Seven? It's something like that. But like, they lean into a lot of the stuff that us, especially as comic book fans, would enjoy because they make fun of DC, they make fun of Marvel, they make fun of, of all this great stuff this season, and they still manage to have really, really interesting and entertaining characters. And good new ones, too. Like I said, there's a Daredevil character now that has a great scene with Homelander. Um, oh, Homelander. Yeah, Homelander's awesome. But uh, yeah. I will also say this. I will also say this. Superman can beat Homelander's butt. There's no comparison. Okay, I'm going to say that now. Anybody who wants to at me and say that Homelander can hang with Superman, I will argue with you. Till the end of the day, Homelander is totally a joke compared to Superman. There's a couple of moments in season two that kind of prove it. Superman would kick his butt. All right? So stop making those comparisons, people. Superman is way more powerful than Homelander. Yeah, I mean, you look at Superman the year 3000 or something like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Who would win then? Homelander versus the dude from... Which dude? Dude. The kid, the from the scary movie. Oh, oh, um, you're talking about um, the Brightburn, the James Gunn movie. Brightburn, um, Brightburn, yeah. Oh well, yeah. Homelander versus him. I mean, yeah. Homelander would probably still win that fight. Yes. It's just that, like, there's some. You know how it goes with these things. They have like things that show his power scaling in comparison to other characters and it's not that he's not super strong but like they do some things this season that show that he can't hang with superman if you really need to it's not gonna happen superman's the man although that would be kind of an interesting crossover if you really think about it to have some of the the uh the boys superheroes fight some dc or marvel superheroes that'd be interesting to see um, but yeah, so far season two is really good. It did release the first three episodes two weeks ago, 
on Amazon Prime. The most recent episode, episode four, released on Friday. They're doing a release schedule of every Friday, which I do have to mention, all you toxic fans out there who are complaining and giving this show one star just because they didn't give it to you all in one shot, grow up. Grow up. Like, I mean, to give it one star because of that is dumb, but I kind of do sympathize. I'd much rather take it all in one sitting. And I I understand that. But to but to judge the entire show's actual like how good it is based on just because you don't like the release schedule doesn't. make. Yeah, that's excessive. I mean, that's 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 review bombing of the worst kind. So y'all who are doing that, give the show a chance. You might actually like it. There's there's some better action scenes and some better characters. If you like season one, you're going to like season two. Stop being babies, fandom. We are geeks. We must represent and be the most cool and awesome geeks that we possibly can be. Okay. One of these days, I just want to write an article about that. <laughs> Man, we need to. I mean, I, I can't even see. I can't even talk. I'm so upset. We might have to have a whole conversation about that. Toxic fandom. What's wrong with you guys, man? Let's enjoy some stuff and have fun with it together. Anyway, yeah. you guys can can dislike my comments all you want. I know that the real Get Geek fans are watching the boys and loving it for the quality of the show and not for whatever other other hangups y'all got. So anyway, The Boys Season 2 is pretty freaking good so far. Check it out. Wait if you got to so you can binge it all in one shot. I know that the crew that's with me right now, Eli and AJ, you guys are probably going to binge it when it's all done or close to done, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But give it a shot. And AJ, you got to finish season – or excuse me, Eli, you got to finish season one. You're behind. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, but yeah, so that's it for my geek outs for this week. The Boys Season 2 is awesome. Check it out. All these great things that we've been watching, check them out and check out our podcast, of course. As always, I want to give you guys a little bit of a reminder. The best way to sub- to subscribe, the best way to support your favorite podcast here at the Get Geek Crew is to subscribe, rate, like, rate, share, and subscribe. Like, rate, share, and subscribe. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give us some feedback. That's the best way to get this podcast to grow. We always really appreciate those of you who have uh, taken the time to give us feedback and let us know how things are going. And thanks to our fans who have liked, rated, shared, and subscribed to our podcast so far, which, by the way, you can find on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes, wherever your favorite podcasts are sold. So please check us out. Another reminder, thanks to all the fans for dealing with us with any sound issues or errors or artifacts. We are recording remotely once again as a reminder. So please bear with us. I think we've improved it quite a bit over the last couple of weeks and months, but we always stand to improve a little bit more. And we always appreciate feedback from our Get Geek crew and team out there. So let us know, guys. Anyways, that was another episode of the Get Geek Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Check out our most recent episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms. Last week, we touched upon Mulan. We touched upon Bill and Ted, Face the Music, and the recent release of Fox's The New Mutants. The week before, we talked about Chad, which owes me. Uh, so check those podcasts out. We think they are pretty good. We hope that you think that as well. Anyways... As always, to everyone out there in internet land, please stay safe, but also stay geeky, my friend. Wait, 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 w